Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be revising the properties of small covalent substances. So first of all, I've got some sugar in this test tube and I'm going to start heating it up in the Bunsen burner to see how easy it is to melt the sugar and we're going to come back to that in literally a minute or two's time. So very quickly we can see that the sugar is beginning to melt and it's also beginning to boil. So that shows us that the small covalent compound has a low melting point and also a low boiling point. So staying with the sugar as my covalent compound, I'm going to see if it conducts electricity when it's in solid form. So here I've got the circuit with some electrodes and a bulb and I'll just check that the circuit is working correctly. So we've got a good circuit there. I'm going to put the electrodes in the solid sugar to see if we can get it to conduct electricity. And as you can see the bulb doesn't light up so small covalent compounds do not conduct electricity when solid. This time we're going to see if the sugar, the small covalent compound, conducts electricity when it's in solution. So I'm going to put some water in the beaker here and I'm going to add some sugar to it and give it a good stir to make it into a solution. So although it might be a saturated solution now some of that sugar will have dissolved. You'll notice I'm using distilled water because that means it won't have any other ions in there. It will just have the sugar. So the distilled water itself is a pure substance it's only got the compound water and nothing else in there. So a lot of that sugar will now be dissolved in the water. Obviously don't try this at home, putting electricity through liquids, it can be very dangerous. I'm using a very small supply of electricity. So let's see if the sugar solution conducts electricity this time. And we can see the bulb still isn't lighting up. So even in solution, the small covalent compounds still don't conduct electricity. We've just seen the properties of small covalent molecules which you can also call simple molecules and it's important that you're able to explain why simple molecules have these properties by talking about the bonding that's in them. So if we take carbon dioxide as an example we can see there several molecules of CO2 and the red bonds are showing the strong covalent bonds holding together each molecule. And we call these strong intramolecular bonds. This means bonds within or inside the molecule. But between those molecules, shown in green here, are much weaker forces. And we don't call them bonds anymore. We call them forces because they are weaker and they are weak forces between the molecules. So we call those weak intermolecular forces. Inter means between. So we've got the strong covalent bonds within the molecules, the intramolecular bonds, and we've got the weak forces between the molecules, the weak intermolecular forces. Make sure you know the differences between the two. We're now going to use what we know about the bonding in simple molecules to explain why they have a low melting point and a low boiling point, like we saw the sugar melting easily. We need to remember when something melts or boils, the particles move slightly further apart and start moving around more. And that means you've got to break or overcome the forces and bonds between the molecules. So in the case of simple molecules, like the carbon dioxide that we've got here, there are weak intermolecular forces. They're the weak forces between the molecules. That means you don't need much energy to overcome these forces and therefore they have a low melting point and boiling point. Make sure you can remember these three points for an exam question. There's one more thing you need to know about melting points and boiling points of simple molecules. As the molecules get bigger, the intermolecular forces get stronger. You can see here with the more green lines between the bigger molecules at the bottom. So if the intermolecular forces between the molecules are stronger, we need more energy to overcome them. And that means they're going to have a higher melting point and higher boiling point as the molecules get bigger. You also need to be able to explain 
why simple molecules don't conduct electricity. So first of all, we need a reminder of what an electric current actually is. Well, an electric current is the flow or the movement of charged particles. So that could be either delocalized electrons flowing, like if you have a copper wire, the delocalized electrons will flow down the wire. And we'll say more about that when we look at the bonding in metals. Or it could be the movement of ions. So in the case here, we've got maybe some molten sodium chloride and we're putting electricity through it and all the positive sodium ions are moving to the right and all the negative chloride ions are moving to the left. So once again, we've got the flow of charged particles. So it's used to the flow of delocalized electrons or the flow of ions that are able to move. Let's look again at our example, carbon dioxide, which is a simple molecule or a small covalent molecule. We can see there are no delocalized electrons. We can also see there are no ions. So there's no charged particles that are able to move around. So that means simple molecules don't conduct electricity at all, whether they're in the solid state or whether they've been melted or dissolved. Remember with ionic substances, they don't conduct when they're solid, but they do conduct when they're a liquid because then the ions can move about. In this case, simple molecules don't conduct electricity at all. Finally, we're going to summarize the properties of simple molecules and more importantly, explain why they have these properties by talking about the structure and bonding of simple molecules. We're going to summarize it as a mind map. This can be a very powerful tool in your revision. So first of all, remember simple molecules have low melting points and low boiling points because they have those weak intermolecular forces between the molecules. And that means they don't need much energy to overcome those forces and break those forces. This means they're often liquids or gases at room temperature because they have a low melting point and low boiling point. So that means room temperature will be warm enough to actually melt it or in some cases boil it and turn it into a gas. They don't conduct electricity and that's because they don't have delocalized electrons and they don't have any charged ions. Also, the bigger the molecules have higher melting points and that's because there's stronger forces between the molecules and therefore more energy is needed to break those forces. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please remember to like it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.